Welcome to Pentecost, or what we used to call Whit Sunday. I can't hear the Reverend Sabine Baring Gould's great hymn, Onward Christian Soldiers, set to Sullivan's wonderful music, without thinking about those great Whit processions I was involved in when I was a boy. Behind me, here on the screen, is a Whit procession taking place in Royton, the town in which I was brought up. And somewhere on here is the young Peter, 55 years ago. Whitson has been a holiday in England since the Middle Ages. And it was only in 1972 that it was fixed as the last Monday in May. Until then, Whit Monday was a great day of celebration. These processions, which we fondly remember, began in 1801 in Manchester. After the Industrial Revolution, people felt that if we simply had a holiday, then we might go and drink or do other things. And so events were organised to keep people busy. And that's the origin of the Whit Sunday processions. They were also at times not processions of witness or unity. They were processions at times of disunity. In Manchester for many, many years, the Church of England and the Free Churches walked on Monday and the Catholics walked on Friday. But Whit Sunday is about the Holy Spirit. But it was also about, in my youth, getting new clothes and wearing new clothes and going round to your relatives and taking your money box and they used to put money in because you got new clothes on. It was really exciting. It was a day of partying as well and if you got half a crown, 12 and a half p to those of you who don't remember that sort of money, you were doing very well. In fact anybody who had a 10 shilling note, 50p in those days, felt quite well off. It was a time of celebration, a time of partying. And here in Fortin, it happened in Garstang and around here. And there are now some pictures on the screen of people around here involved in Whitsuntide processions and celebrations. You may recognise some of them, but I have to tell you, there's a few years between these pictures and where they are now. But as we watch a few more pictures, we're going to listen to the story of Pentecost. There are two stories of the coming of the Holy Spirit. There's one written by St Luke, in which he talks of the Holy Spirit coming on the Feast of Pentecost in tongues of fire and with a wind. And our Gospel reading today from St John talks about the Holy Spirit being breathed onto the disciples on the evening of Easter Day. And Ruth and Les are now going to read those two stories. The story of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, the apostles were all together in one place. It was ten days after Jesus had gone back to heaven. But before he left them, he had made them a promise. The Holy Spirit will come to you. He will give you power to tell people about me. For ten days the apostles and some of the other followers of Jesus had stayed together, praying and waiting. But now the great day had come. Suddenly a noise like a strong wind filled the whole house, and the followers saw something that looked like flames of fire falling on each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak different languages. At that time Jerusalem was full of Jewish visitors from all over the world. They were all surprised because each one of them heard the apostles speaking in his own language. They were completely amazed at this. They said, look, aren't all these men that we hear speaking from Galilee? But we hear them, them telling us in our own languages about the great things God has done. But others made fun of the apostles saying, they've drunk too much wine. But Peter stood up with the eleven apostles. In a loud voice he spoke to the crowd. Listen to me. Pay attention to what I have to say. These men are not drunk, as you think. It is only nine o'clock in the morning. 
Then Peter made a long speech telling the crowd all about Jesus. That day, about 3,000 people became followers of Jesus and were baptised. They spent the rest of their time in Jerusalem learning all about Jesus from the apostles before returning home. And the apostles continued to meet together to pray and break bread. A reading from John. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Les. The coming of the Holy Spirit. In St John's Gospel, we hear that Jesus appeared to the disciples in the evening of the first day of the week and said to them, as he breathed on them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you go and forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. In the Acts of the Apostles, we hear how Luke roots this very much as Jesus being the Messiah of the Jews. Pentecost is the feast of the harvest, harvest of their souls. This is the new Messiah of whom the prophets speak. This is the man who in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. The Holy Spirit will come upon them. But when the Spirit comes in both versions, it's breathed or it's a wind. If you're going to light a fire, you need to have some draft. If you're going to get a fire going, if you're going to get those flames leaping, you've got to have some draft driving it. It's very difficult to light a fire on a still day with high pressure. If we're going to go out and breathe the Holy Spirit into this community, into this whatever the new world is, we're going to have to go out like winds. We're going to have to go out and breathe on people. Talk to people, get alongside people and tell them that the Holy Spirit is travelling through this village, through this land, to inspire, to make the world a better place as people offer their lives in service to God. The coming of the Holy Spirit was the moment that the church was born. It is the birthday of the church. Today we say, happy birthday church. The church here in this place, God's church here in our world. And the challenge to each of us is to renew again that feeling of the spirit running through us and with excitement and joy to go out and to proclaim the gospel to all those we meet. Those great wit walks were examples of people who one way or another were connected to God's church, going out on the streets to proclaim the gospel. Yes, their roots were not in a mission. Their roots were in social control. But they were great examples. And I don't believe anybody can sing great hymns like Onward Christian Soldiers and not feel their heart warm and their spirit rise. Today, when you break bread together, let the Holy Spirit come into your heart and your life and fill you with fire to do God's will. Pray for the church. Pray for yourself. 
and pray that the wind will blow, the flames will come, and the Spirit will work throughout this world. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of eternal life, open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the Spirit of the living Lord Fill your hearts and lives and the lives of all those that you pray for and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and your family. This Pentecost, this Whit Sunday and forevermore. Amen. In this part of the world, Garstang is clearly a centre for Whitsuntide rejoicing. Talking to people around here, they can talk of going every Whit Monday to Garstang to watch the procession, sometimes to join in, but always to have a party and have fun. As we sit today and reflect on how the Spirit might run through our lives, I invite you to look at these pictures. Some of the people you may recognise, you may even yourself be on one of these pictures. But give thanks that the Spirit of the risen Lord is alive and here in this village, in this world, as much today as it was when the people in the Acts of the Apostles appeared drunk when 3,000 came to faith and pray that we too will follow in those footsteps, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless. Stay safe.